think about it there. Do we call it women's political empowerment or do we call it narrowing the gender gap? Do we think of it as political empowerment or do we think of it as something which is relevant to all forms of decision making? So I could reinterpret that for you as uh, saying it's really important that there are no gender differences in participation in decision making, whether these are formally defined as political or whether they're in other key aspects of society, such as the governance of the economy and finance and the justice system. All of those, it really matters that we have gender equality. Just as an example, some of the work that I did looking at variations in violence against women around the world, I was looking for what correlated with lesser rates of violence against women. And the most important thing that correlated was the percentage of women in parliaments. The more women there were in parliaments, the higher proportion of women in parliaments, the narrower the gender gap of political representation in parliament, the lower the rate of femicide, the lower the rate of violence against women. So yes, politics matters. Everything. I think there isn't one simple uh, answer to that question. Everything matters. It matters to have grassroots energy, the thinking about new ideas and new ways of thinking, and that's in civil society and a grassroots level. It's important to have these uh, organised, um, to have civil society organisations which systematise this a bit more. It's important that those organisations and the grassroots are involved in political parties. Political parties are how we systematically engage in the state, so they matter as well. It matters uh, how we organise inside states. Uh, organisations such as the European Union, and transnational bodies in the United Nations, they all matter. I think it's, it's not that there is one that is more important than another. And some of those strategies affect things which are internal to politics, internal to decision making. We've mentioned things such as quotas and other temporary measures, but we could also refer to the significance of other forms of power. For example, women who have access to independent livelihoods are more likely to be able to feel free to speak out than women who are more constrained. So it matters to reduce gender inequalities elsewhere in order to narrow those gender inequalities in politics. Gender is a system. It matters to think about how the different aspects of gender relations fit together. In that way, gender inequality is a system of lots of different aspects of gender inequality. And that concept of system is really important. We can use different words to describe that system of gender inequality. The softest and most accessible term is probably a system of gender inequality. We could also call it a gender regime, or we can also name it as patriarchy. The term patriarchy is very explicit about the inequality in it. The advantage of patriarchy is it's a really simple and direct term. The disadvantage in that is that sometimes people misinterpret it to think that there is only one form of patriarchy, as if it were perhaps biologically reduced. And of course that's not true. There are lots of different ways in which systems of gender relations, of gender inequality are constructed. So I quite often use the term gender regime in order to better communicate the varieties of forms of gender regime, distinctions between domestic and public forms of gender regime, distinctions within the public form of gender regime between neoliberal and social democratic forms. The differences matter. And if in order to communicate the differences I use the term gender regime, that's what I sometimes do, and if I want the simplicity of simply communicating the directness of the forms of gender inequality, then the term patriarchy does nicely. It's very important to develop the knowledge base, an expert knowledge base, on issues of gender relations and gender inequality. And the universities are a very important site of that, but not the only site. Uh, it matters how that is organised within the university. There are two ways of thinking about that. 
One is that we have specialist areas which do that, gender studies, women's studies, and the other is that it should be everywhere, and that we should be mainstreaming gender analysis to all of the disciplines, that there should be no political science which doesn't address adequately the issues of gender relations, that sociology should also mainstream gender into its core concepts, that we shouldn't think of leaving the main social science disciplines or humanities disciplines free from gender thinking. So I do both and. I think we should have both specialist expert concentrations of knowledge and also that that knowledge should be distributed across all of the relevant disciplines inside the university. And it's very important that we're able to do both. That is also relevant to the question about the relationship between gender expertise and other forms of expertise. It's important that gender knowledge isn't treated as simply self-contained, a separate, almost a ghetto. It's important that no one thinks that you can put gender in a box and leave it there and go on and discuss everything else. It's really important that that doesn't happen and therefore that there's a real adjacency and engagement with other bodies of knowledge. So for example, it matters that we don't imagine that the economy can be treated as if it's gender free. The financial crisis is sometimes treated as if it has no, no consequences for gender, and yet gender inequalities were part of the cause of the financial crisis as well as its consequences. So it's very important in all of these areas that we see and analyze the adjacency between a gender perspective and all of the other major ways of thinking about society and other forms of justice and inequality. There is always a future for feminist theory, and I think these are given some indications to how they should go, uh, that it should always have both a specific site and also that it should also be integrated in other matters, that we should be analysing the specificity of issues in the way that some of our postmodern colleagues have done, but never lose sight of the big macro picture, uh, which has been always a, uh, a very important contribution um, of modernist feminist thought.